From deserted Olympic venues to silent amusement parks, to hotels that haven't had guests in centuries, abandoned places continue to capture the imagination of urban explorers and curious people around the world. Decaying and rotting without anybody caring about them. Places we normally think of being crowded, busy hubs of travel, airports lead the list. As more people traveled and planes grew bigger, many airports were left unable to cope with the fast growth need. For that matter therefore, these are the 10 amazing abandoned airports in the world. But before we jump into number 1, be sure that you have subscribed and hit the bell icon to keep yourself informed with amazing videos. With that said let's jump into our incredible list. Nicosia International Airport in Cyprus. The hangars, runways, terminals and even the gift shops at the now-abandoned Nicosia International Airport in Cyprus remain as they were 40 years ago, eerily frozen in time. Shards of glass and debris litter the airport, which was shut down in 1974, when a coup by supporters of union with Greece prompted Turkey to invade and split the island into a breakaway. The Turkish taking north and an internationally recognized Greek taking south, after that, separate airports were built at the two ends of the island, leaving Nicosia Airport to rot in no man's land. The site is now a United Nations protected area, but it remains a symbol of conflict and how nature can take over neglected structures. Weather has led to structural deterioration to the terminal building and to the Cyprus Airways Trident Sunjet passenger plane still resting beside it. Gaza International Airport. Inaugurated in 1998 by U.S. President Bill Clinton and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. Gaza International Airport was meant to become an emblem of Palestine's independence, but instead lived a rather short life. In 2001, Israeli forces air-bombed its controlled tower and radar station and bulldozed the runway in response to Palestinian militant attacks on Israelis in the Al-Aqsa Intifada, making it effectively inoperative from early 2002. Now, a golden dome and white columns are the only survivors of the airport, which was designed to serve 700,000 passengers per year and allowed for the birth of local airline Palestinian Airways. Although the airline existed only on paper, since it has a fleet of zero aircraft, Yasser Arafat International has paid a high price for the Israeli-Palestine conflict. Hellenikon International Airport in Athens, Greece. Once, Hellenikon lived the glorious days of being one of Greece's flagship terminals and hub for international travel. Formerly known as Kalamaki Airfield. The airport was built in 1938 and soon became a Nazi base until 1945. At the end of the war, it was then deployed by the US for Air Transport Command between Italy and the Middle East, until the early 1990s, when it became a commercial airport and was renamed Hellenikon. It was a commercial airport up until its closure in 2001 when replaced by Athens International Airport. It was Greece's only international airport, with a maximum capacity of 12 million passengers. Since it was then replaced by the new Athens International Airport in anticipation of the 2004 Olympics. During the Games, Hellenikon's runway was turned into a venue for a range of sports including hockey and baseball, while its hangars hosted fencing and basketball competitions. However, most of the airport grounds have been abandoned. Despite the city's initial plans to turn it into a park, it was instead abandoned to its own fate as the financial crisis took over Greece. Floyd Bennett Field in New York. In the 1930s, Floyd Bennett Field was New York's first ever municipal airport, strategically located on Barron Island and within reasonable distance from Manhattan. During its early days, the airport became renowned for witnessing the exploits of Amelia Earhart and hosting spectacular races, but was later turned into a naval air station. It was eventually shut down in the 1970s in favor of New Jersey's Newark Airport. However, contrary to many other closed airports, it was not entirely abandoned. Since 1972, it has been put under the management of the National Park Service and has hosted cycle races, as well as meetings organized by the Amateur Astronomers Association of New York.
W.H. Bramble Airport, Montserrat. Also known as Blackbourne Airport, W.H. Bramble Airport was a small international airport on the east coast of the island of Montserrat, a British overseas territory in the Caribbean. The airport was destroyed when Soufri Air Hills volcano erupted and covered the island with ash in 1997. The eruption killed 19 people and buried the capital. For several years after the disaster, Montserrat was only accessible by helicopters or boats. In 2005, Montserrat inaugurated a new airport, Gerald's Airport, an $18.5 million facility built on the island's northern side. Old Daber Airfield in Germany. Built in 1934, under a Nazi initiative to revive the Luftwaffe, this field served in the German war efforts until it was overrun and occupied by the Russian army in 1945. The Russians then moved in several units of the Soviet Air Force and over the next 20 years, extended the runway to 7,900 feet, added a radar site, and added a nearby surface-to-air missile site. In 1961, they also added additional air regiments. In 1989, with the reunification of East and West Germany, the Russian government agreed to return all military bases by the end of 1994, and Old Darber was turned back over to German control on June 20, 1994. After a few years of use, the airfield was abandoned. Since being abandoned and slowly reclaimed by the surrounding flora, the long runway has been used occasionally for racing purposes, and recently, plans to turn the airfield into a photovoltaic storage plant have been proposed. Oljava Air Base in Croatia Aljava Air Base, on the border of Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina, under the Plujasevica mountain, was the largest underground airport and military air base in former Yugoslavia, and one of the largest in all of Europe. Construction began in 1948 and took two decades, finally finishing in 1968. During that two-decade period, nearly $6 billion was spent on it, making it one of the largest military projects in all of Europe. The main function of the airbase was to be an early detection center, similar to NORAD, and it was built to be able to take a direct hit from a 20 kiloton nuclear bomb similar to the size of the one dropped on Nagasaki. In 1991, the airbase saw extensive use during the Yugoslav Wars, and while withdrawing from the airbase, the Yugoslav army filled pre-built spaces in the runways, designed exactly for this purpose, with explosives, and detonated them to render the runways unusable. When the Serbian military arrived shortly after, they completed the destruction of the base by setting off an additional 56 tons of explosives all through the tunnel complex. The resulting detonation was said to be so powerful that the nearby village of Bihak claimed to see smoke rising from the tunnels for six months after the detonation. The destruction of the base caused incalculable damage to the buildings and equipment left behind and to the surrounding environment. The site is also now littered with live anti-tank and anti-personnel mines, which some local police forces use to train mine-sniffing canine units, but which also make it a dangerous place to visit. Ciudad Real Central Airport in Spain Opened in 2009 at a cost of 1.1 billion euros, the Ciudad Real Airport was supposed to be a symbol of modern Spain's affluence. But the 28,000-square-foot airport was shut down after operating for only three years. The airport which was intended to serve both Madrid and the Andalusian coast, each accessible by train in 50 minutes, passenger traffic never took off due to the short demand. CR Aeropuertos, the operator of the terminal, went into bankruptcy in June 2012, with debts of around 300 million euros, making the airport to close. The airport now sits abandoned with runways continuous painted with yellow crosses, so pilots will know they cannot land there. Croydon Airport in England. This used to be one of the most iconic airports in the world before World War II, along with Le Burget in Paris and Templehof in Berlin. What made it even more special is that it was the first airport to use air traffic control. Also, several famous figures, from Amy Johnson and Charles Lindbergh to Winston Churchill, graced its runway, which crossed a road on which traffic had to be stopped by a man waving a red flag. Croydon played a key role as a fighter station during the Battle of Britain and was bombed in the first major air raid on London. 
It closed on September 30, 1959, and much of the site has been built over, but the former control tower and terminal building can still be seen, decorated by a de Havilland heron. Kai Tak International Airport in Hong Kong, China Built in close proximity to one of Hong Kong's busiest residential areas, Kai Tak Airport was one of the most dangerous airports in the world. Landing at the airport implied flying low over the island's buildings, as well as enacting a series of complicated maneuvers amid Hong Kong's frequently windy weather and surrounding mountains, which was referred to as the Kai Tak Heart Attack. Concerns about noise pollution and lack of privacy for locals added to the airport's miseries. Unsurprisingly, these issues and a series of accidents that saw a plane ending up in the harbor led to Kai Tak's closure in 1998, 73 years after its opening. Since then, it took the city 15 years and countless proposals to eventually decide to turn it into a cruise terminal in a new residential area. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Watch the most dangerous airports in the world with that video up, or the top 10 worst aviation accidents with the video down.